morning. Oh, He's got the mic, so I'm going to have to pay special attention to that this morning. Welcome, welcome um, to Reformation Sunday. Uh, there's a few announcements I have that have been flashing across the board. Uh, once again, I will invite you to its election night. Tuesday, November 5th, the Wototo African Children's Choir will be at Zion. Uh, so come de-stress from election night to hear this wonderful choir. They travel the United States and will be making a stop at Zion. We still are in need of one host family. If you are interested in hosting two of the kids and their one chaperone, um, what we are going to do for those that are listening that are hosting already, um, you provide your, your responsibility is to provide them uh, a place to sleep after the concert on the 5th and breakfast. It was a sack lunch, but we were going to put the sack lunches together at Zion. So it's going to be a sack lunch put together party kind of thing. So there's one less responsibility as a host that you have for that. Um, do we have any other announcements? No other announcements? Oh, I knew there was going to be a hand. Well, yes, it's Jeff. not an announcement, it's a question. Sure. Um, Sam, it says Zion will be providing a dinner along with the concert. Is the dinner before 7 o'clock? The, the dinner is at 5, and we're, we're providing a dinner for the, the not the community. It's okay. for the for the choir members and their, so we're feeding them prior to the concert at Zion. Thank you. Okay. That's a great question because that was originally in the bulletin that we plastered all over everywhere. We're not prepared for that, so <laughs> that could have been a disaster. Um, let me see, I was asked this morning about, I know there's a couple of ministries coming up at least on the Zion side, Operation Christmas Child will be, is, uh, is uh, Operation Christmas, that's going to be hard for me, Operation Christmas Child is underway, we're collecting and putting together boxes um, that I think the seven, November 15th is the day those are due, those boxes are at Zion, um, we can provide some here if, if need be, and I think we should. Um, Anything else before we? Yes, Jen. Our outreach committee here at um, City Hall will be getting a family from the Otsego area, so we will be providing for a whole family this year for Christmas. So more information. Oh, another hand. Yes. Um, Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but that have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings that were within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be the first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace and 
God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. You join us in a mighty fortress is our God. <laughs> Father, be with you all. And I get to have the kids come up now. Now you know there's room up here for everybody, right? Great big old circle. I'm so happy to see everybody. Come, let's, go, let's go around on the other side of the baptismal font, even, because as we need a circle that includes everybody. It's like God's embrace. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. So one of the things we like to review are the four Gospels, right? 
Who can remember the first one? Um, Matthew. Matthew. Okay. Luke. That's one of them. Let's do, what's the next one? Mark. Mark Matthew, Mark, Luke, and? John. Let's say them all together. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Nicely done, y'all. Today, um, our synod authorized minister, that means that the bishop is really, really so glad and thankful that John is going, is, is serving, helping serve, telling the world about the gospel. Okay, that's what all that means. So today, we've been reading from Mark, but today we're going to hear from John's gospel. And one of the things you're going to hear about in all of the readings, we get to hear about all the gifts of God. Let me ask you, when you have a birthday or Christmas, do you make a list of the gifts you want? Yeah. You do. Well, when I was a kid, we didn't make a list. Um, our family bought us gifts. And I learned to be so grateful for each one of those gifts. So um, w there are a number of gifts God gives us. What are some gifts from, uh, from God that you know about? Audrey. Love. Love. Boom! Message over. Yep. <laughs> we can all go home now. Have cake first. What are some other gifts from God? Yes, Kay. Light. light. I love that. Yes. Because he's the light of the, of the world. So another one that I want you to think about is that we're going to hear today is we're going to hear about gifts of faith and trust and, and belief. I think those three things mean the same. So everybody stay here. I'm going to come down here. I'm not worried about okay yeah other people may be but I'm not so um, Audrey come on up here with me you're gonna look that way you're gonna stay really stiff do you trust me that if you fall back I'll catch you yeah so you ready fall back whenever okay it's called a trust fall right and I asked Audrey to do this because I already knew that she trusted me, okay? So that's what God wants us to do sometimes. We like to plan things and make them just so, but actually what happens is that God is at work all the time in us and with us, and so we have to, we're called to trust. We're, it's actually when you can say, I believe, or I trust you, God, that's a gift from God. Have you ever thought about that as trust as a gift? Yeah? I want you to think about that, okay? So God gives us a gift of love. We've been talking about that. And God gives us the gift of trust, that God will be with us always, okay? So um, I think there's, we're not going to hold hands today. Let's go ahead and stand up and we'll pray. I'll say a line and then you repeat after, okay? Okay? That's all right. Trusting God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for these kids. Thank you for these kids. Thank you for the adults. Thank you for the adults. Thank you for life and light. Thank you for light. For thank you for life and light. All these things together. How do we end a prayer? We say, Amen. Thanks for coming up. There is running. Miss Jen is saying, please don't run. pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above.
above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For St. Paul's Lutheran Church, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with our ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know, all, know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 46, and we'll read uh, responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. 
Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it in the break of day. The nations rage and, and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations thou hast brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Here ends the reading. The second reading is Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded by what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from what the works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel reading is from the book of John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. This is the Holy Gospel as recorded by John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Invite the Disciples of Christ Parish along the Maumee River North Choir. Yes. Yes. <gasps> Woohoo!
that I can 
1917, 507 years ago. Uh, it spoke of the 95 Theses. It spoke of remembering Martin Luther and his opposition to the indulgences and other religious practices of the church in his day. Last year, it was a history lesson. Testament to the word being a living word, my heart is in a different place today. Today my heart contemplates that question, what is freedom, not only in freedom, but what is freedom in Christ? As the woman in the story, do we view it as freedom to say what we want to say, or to do what we want to do, or to go where we want to go? I must admit that those freedoms seem pretty liberating sometimes. There was a time that freedom liberated me from those commandments um, I had learned about as a kid. I could recite them back. I tried my best to follow, however unsuccessfully. So instead of being the standard by which I tried to live, I turned away feeling that God had, had set an impossibly high bar. Um, he gave us his law and it was written in stone. And I couldn't keep them. My freedom became a freedom from Christ, not a freedom in Christ. Martin Luther wrote volumes about the law. He held those commandments in high esteem. Still, some of his teaching was controversial. He wrestled with ideas about who the commandments were written for, about how each applied to our Christian life, and about the very idea of whether or not Christians could live by God's standards. Luther would write, no man can progress so far in sanctification as to keep even one of the Ten Commandments as it should be kept. Luther was a straightforward always asking, was is das? What is this? And then providing his interpretation. He taught that loving God, putting God first, is woven through all the others. A scriptural parallel is found in Matthew 22, when Jesus instructs the leader, the teachers of the law, you should love the Lord God with all of your heart and with all of your mind and with all of your soul, and love your neighbors as yourself. Those are the Ten Commandments condensed and taught by Jesus himself. <coughs> Luther also included but insteads when he interpreted the commandments. In this way, a list of ought not tos became a list of oughts. As examples, this is from my little small catechism book. You shall not murder became you shall not murder, but instead you are to fear and trust God and help support others in all of life's needs. The message, give life, not take it away. Similarly, remember the Sabbath day became fear and love God so that we do not despise God's word or preaching but instead keep the word holy and gladly hear and learn from it. For me, when written as a list of but insteads, the commandments transform, dare I say reform, from an impossible list of tasks to a to-do a to list filled with hope. I still couldn't keep them, but at least I had hope. Luther taught that the purpose of the law had little to do with following a list, no matter how it was written. The main purpose of the law was to bring light to our sinful natures, the natures of our hearts, and then to illuminate our complete need for Jesus. From today's Romans text, 320, Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. To be sure, Luther wanted reformation in the church, but he wanted more. 
He wanted reformation of the human heart as well. Life is more than just working our way down our checklist and into heaven. But instead, it is making way in our hearts for the Holy Spirit to lead us to Jesus. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Friends, that's all of us. That's all of us. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. We need reformation in our hearts. But know that reformation doesn't start with our sin. It doesn't start by looking at ourselves and then trying to be better. Following a list. We were made for more than that. Antoine, we were made for more than that. Yes? Yes. Amen. Reformation begins with the love of God expressed in Christ Jesus. Yes. It all starts with the love of God, with his promises, with the cross, with this table, with the word that is put in our minds and on our hearts. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Reformation, my friend, is an inside-out job. It isn't about this place, its traditions and practices. It's about the hearts of the people in it. Hearts that truly follow Jesus will be set free. That's today's promise. We are inherently sinful. Our natures are more evil than good. If we go back just a couple of verses in Romans to Romans 3 10, we read, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. No one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. That truth liberates me because I know I'm not alone. We all need Jesus to transform our heart Captive to sin. I even found myself captive to those list of commandments. Trying my tying myself in knots, running away from the truth. Whatever we place before God, we can find ourselves captives to. And those aren't always bad things. Those aren't always bad things. Church tradition, our family. Our earthly relationships, those are good things. But when we put them before God, even good things can hold us captive. They can become idols. They can become priorities over our relationship with Jesus. And those words might be difficult to hear. But we all want to put our families first. And we all want to put our, our relationships first and our church traditions first. So those are hard words to hear that we can't place those things above Jesus. In our study, Meg and I um, and others talk about the many different ways that we can speak truth. It's hard to pick just one sometimes we say. Just pick one and go is often what we settle on. So week after week, we want to proclaim the gospel, the good news. It's in every piece of scripture. Because all scripture is God-breathed and leads to Jesus and to God's love, where it all starts. It all leads to the cross and to the table and to new life. I want to introduce one more piece of scripture not included yet today. It is from Ezekiel chapter 36 and it's verse 26. And it says, I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit 
a new spirit, a heart of flesh, a heart filled with the love of God and filled with love for our neighbors as well. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The living word can put our hearts in a new place. Many of you know last weekend I was in Florida. I heard some of you asking where my tan was. I left that in Florida. Um, serving on a great banquet team. For 20 years I have been blessed to continue to be asked to be part of this ministry. We, this is why that I love the ministry so very much. I have been witness to lives and hearts being renewed and reformed. I've watched the Holy Spirit move in hearts of stone. My heart of stone in 2005 attended that banquet. And I watched and I felt the Holy Spirit move in me. And for 19 years, I've watched it over and over and over again. I watched it this past weekend move in the heart of my in the heart of my heart over there. I've seen um, hearts that witness to what the love of God in Jesus Christ and in community can do. I have indeed been set free. Still have 
throughout the world. Open wide the paths toward unity between denominations so that all followers of Christ may join in shared worship and mission. God of grace. Renewing God, as the dying leaves display their beauty, we are reminded that nature's cycle of life includes and requires both life and death. Instill in your people a mission of preservation and appreciation for trees, animals, and waterways threatened by climate collapse. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, in the spirit of reformation, we pray for all who cry out for relief from systematic oppression. May the hearts of those who occupy seats of power be reformed so that peace becomes the center of our life together. God of grace. Comforting God, be with all who are sick, suffering, or grieving in our own community and beyond. Surround them with the promise of your love, comfort, and grace that never ends. God of grace. Divine guide, continue to challenge this community to be ever reforming in our ministries and outreach efforts. Inspire creative ideas among us so that the communal grace-filled word of God remains at the heart of our ministry. God of grace. Be with our bishops. Be with our bishops. Elizabeth and Daniel, and all those who help them serve. God of grace, be with all in the world who are living in war torn countries, those who live without food, without clothing, and help us to serve them in your love. God of grace, Almighty God in Christ's resurrection. You ensure that though life be wrenched away, death cannot be in day. <laughs> May the truth of your saving grace through faith sustain our hope for life in you. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment to share that peace.
please rise as you're able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly halls. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives and hearts, let us help us to serve one another and all in need through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up those hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Holy Lord, Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this very day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink from this cup, do so, remembering me. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us ever to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is Christ's meal. You are all welcome here.
Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ bless you and keep you always in his love and grace. Amen. Since the next hymn is Rise and Shine, why don't we rise and shine? 